1989. There's no internet, and the first truly portable mobile phone is released. Fast forward 10 years to 1999, and the internet is part of everyone's life, and Y2K is causing panic. See how life dramatically changed in the span of only 10 years. Just being a kid. If you're a kid in 1989, you could eat a bowl of limited edition Nintendo cereal for breakfast, probably because it was the same year the first Game Boy was released. If you didn't have a Game Boy, a Rubik's Cube would have to do. Before school, you might watch an episode of The Smurfs or Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from the kitchen table. In 1999, another limited edition cereal featuring the beloved Rugrats characters hit grocery store shelves. While the Game Boy was still popular, Tamagotchis were all the rage in handheld gaming. While not a video game per se, you would have to feed it and take care of its needs, all electronically, of course. Failing to do so would lead to the Tamagotchi's ultimate demise. Kids would also trade Beanie Babies with friends at school, and Furby was another odd-looking but lovable childhood companion. On the playground, you might have bickered with your friends about which Powerpuff Girl was your favorite, or trade Pokemon cards with your friends. So what do you do after school in 1989? Well, you might head to the arcade with your friends or just crash on the couch with a steaming hot plate of Tostino's pizza rolls and watch an after-school school special warning you about stranger danger. You might trade your My Little Ponies with your next door neighbor, or stay out at the playground until the streetlights came on. A kid in 1999 would be dipping Dunkaroos and watching Hey Arnold despite the squeals coming from their younger siblings Tickle Me Elmo in the background. And forget about going to the arcade, you and your friends were probably playing Super Smash Bros. on a Nintendo 64 console. Whether you grew up in the 80s or 90s, it was a pretty fun time to be a kid. TV and Movies if you wanted to pull a Ferris Bueller in 1989 and blow off work or school, you might head to the movie theater for a matinee. The most successful movie of 1989 was Tim Burton's Batman, starring Michael Keaton. If superheroes aren't really your thing, you might have enjoyed watching Meg Ryan and Billy Crystal go from enemies to lovers in When Harry Met Sally. If you had a deep appreciation for animation or just fancied yourself a Disney kid, The Little Mermaid would have been sure to delight. This would be the last Disney film to use hand-drawn animation before going digital. 1999, however, was the year of cult classics. We know the first rule is to never talk about it, but Fight Club struck it big at the box office in October. Audiences also saw Neo dodging a few bullets in The Matrix, Hugh Grant had women swooning in Notting Hill, and Heath Ledger's grand declaration of love on the football field in 10 Things I Hate About You stayed with a generation of teenage girls. If you were an SNL fan in 1989, you would have watched comedy icon Mike Myers join the cast. This would be his stepping stone into films like Shrek and Austin Powers. Popular late 80s TV included The Golden Girls, The Wonder Years, and Growing Pains, as well as game shows like Wheel of Fortune. 1989 also saw the pilot episode of Seinfeld, the show about nothing, which would go on to be a favorite of many. Also, The Simpsons premiered in 1989, which set off a trend of adult animated TV. Who could have imagined that Homer and the gang would still be making new episodes in 2022, more than 30 years later? A few years later, shows like Family Guy, South Park, and Futurama ushered in a new animation era with shows aimed at adults. 1999 saw the rise of HBO, with shows like The Sopranos and West Wing achieving critical acclaim. For something a little lighter, audiences could turn on Frasier or Friends. Thanks to streaming services, these shows are still super popular with younger generations today, many of whom weren't even yet born when the shows originally aired. We need you to hit that like button and subscribe. Your support can really make a difference. Computers and Y2K Panic
Okay, it's time to get some work done. In 1989, you might have typed away at the Macintosh Portable that Apple introduced as their first iteration of the laptop. The irony is that the computer weighed 16 pounds and was not, in fact, portable. Unless, of course, you still had room in your bag for all the accessories the computer needed to run, along with the computer itself. That would be quite the workout to lug around town all day. In the late 80s, computers were used at work to do basic word processing and number crunching, and there was still no such thing as the internet. But by 1999, the capability to connect to the internet was more common at the office and even at home. Early web pages and chat forums cropped up so that computers were not strictly used for work anymore. Video games like EverQuest were developed, and kids who were lucky enough to have a family computer were able to spend a limited amount of time online. This was still way before Wi-Fi was a thing. By the late 90s, the business world had become pretty reliant on computers, something unprecedented in society up to that point. As the year 2000 approached, there was widespread fear about whether or not computers could handle the date switch into the new millennium. Would our electrical grid collapse? Would all our money be erased? Would planes fall from the sky? The media did not help quell the Y2K fear, and the buzz about the bug spread to all corners of the world. Some people hoarded food and water, opting to spend 1999 in underground bunkers. Others took Prince's advice and partied anyway, like it was 1999. Who cares? If the end is nigh, the least you can do is have a good time, right? Companies and organizations checked and upgraded their computer systems bracing for the switch. But New Year's Eve 1999 was ultimately anticlimactic. When the clock struck midnight, absolutely nothing happened. The world continued as normal, and the world system of computers continued to uphold society. Who's calling? On your way home from the office in 1989, you might use your car phone to call home and ask if you needed to pick anything up from the store. In the late 80s, the car phone was a status symbol that indicated you were an important and busy professional. Some companies paid to have car phones for their employees so business could be done from anywhere. In 1989, Motorola took this a step further when they released the first flip phone, the MicroTAC 9800X. At the time of its release, the MicroTAC was the lightest and smallest cell phone on the market. Before this, the Motorola DynaTAC, better known as the Brick, was the standard mobile phone of the day. And as you can see, the word mobile is used pretty loosely. By 1999, the Nokia 3210 was the cell phone of choice. Within 10 years, phones became more widely accessible and not just for the business class. For the first time, even teenagers had cell phones as they were becoming a lot more common, although nothing like the necessity they are today. And once the teenagers got their hands on cell phones, it wasn't long before texting became a thing, although emojis were still a ways away. Whether by 1989 or 99 standards, today's iPhones and Androids look almost nothing like the phones of the day. Taking a road trip When hitting the road in 1989, you might have zoomed around town in a Buick sedan or station wagon. Gas was about a dollar a gallon, and you might pop in Janet Jackson's newest album, Rhythm Nation, into the cassette player. The late 80s also saw the rise of prominent hip-hop artists like LL Cool J, salt and Peppa, and MC Hammer. 1989 produced a symphony of music bound to please any music lover regardless of their tastes. By 1999, gas hovered around $1.17 a gallon before seeing a big spike as the new millennium hit. You may have driven a Toyota Camry as it was the most popular car of the year. 
For the first time in a while, truck sales made up half of new vehicle sales as more people embraced that country feeling. Your cassettes from 10 years ago likely still worked in your car if it had a tape player, but most new cars were now being equipped with CD players. The White Stripes released their debut album in 1999, and the Red Hot Chili Peppers put forth the iconic album Californication. Chances are you still have some of these songs on your playlist today, and not just because they're nostalgic. The 80s and 90s gave us some really great music that keeps us company in traffic jams to this day. What's for dinner? If you were to go to McDonald's in 1989, you could get your hands on the McPizza. Yes, that's right, McDonald's rolled out this new product to rival popular pizza joints like Pizza Hut and Domino's. The McPizza didn't become a McD's staple largely because of a design flaw. The McPizza was too big for the drive through window. The other issue was that it took too long to cook. Within a few years of the McPizzas getting on the menu, McD's removed the item and stuck to what they do best, burgers and fries. In 1999, KFC took a leap with a sandwich product that really paid off. The original recipe chicken sandwich hit the market and was much loved. The success of the sandwich was due to the fact that KFC didn't reinvent the wheel. They just adapted the chicken their customers already loved. If mom or dad had made a chicken recipe in 1989, they'd have paid 79 cents a pound for the poultry. But by the late 80s, it was not uncommon for both parents to be working, so families relied on frozen or prepared food at dinner time. Kids took on more responsibility in the kitchen, too. The biggest thing to remember was to preheat the oven and put in the frozen casserole. By 1999, frozen foods like Hot Pockets and Pizza Pops became freezer staples. However, a homemade meal of spaghetti and meatballs would set you back $2 per pound of ground beef. Whoever did the cooking, many families were grateful to have time around the dinner table together to catch up on each other's lives without being glued to a smartphone. Fashion alert! On a morning in 1989, your clock radio might wake you up with Madonna's hit single, Express Yourself. The catchy tune would inspire you to pull on your bodysuit and leg warmers, pop in a workout video, and do some aerobics or jazzercise. In 1999, you might take your morning workout to a Zumba studio as the cardio dance craze was just beginning to catch on across the nation. The 80s and 90s might make you cringe when you look at photos of big hair and laugh at questionable fashion choices. In 1999, you might get dressed for the day in your crop top and jelly shoes. Maybe twist your Rachel haircut up in a few butterfly clips. The 80s fashion from 10 years previous of puffy skirts with leggings underneath and oversized t-shirts paired with biker shorts are so last decade. No one would be caught dead wearing parachute pants heading into the new millennium. However, today, 80s and 90s fashion is making a huge comeback with kids rocking high-waisted jeans and baggy sweatshirts. Pictures of style icons of the day, like Princess Diana and Cindy Crawford, circulate on TikTok with teens recreating their favorite looks. It seems that everything old does become new again, so good thing you didn't throw out those leg warmers. In the news. If you were to turn on the nightly news in 1989, you'd see flashes from the Tiananmen Square protests in China, the Exxon Valdez oil spill off of the coast of Alaska, or you might even watch the fall of the Berlin Wall. U.S. President George H.W. Bush had a lot to deal with in 1989, but not as much as President Bill Clinton, who in 1999 dealt with the fallout of the Monica Lewinsky scandal and faced impeachment hearings. In 1999, the world lost beloved baseball legend Joe DiMaggio, as well as film auteur Stanley Kubrick. The arts also took a hit in 1989 with the deaths of Lucille Ball, Salvador Dali, and Laurence Olivier. Luckily, to fill the void, future wizard Daniel Radcliffe, better known as Harry Potter, was born, as well as America's music sweetheart, Taylor Swift. 
Thanks for watching. We really appreciate it. Tap on another great video and help us make more by hitting that subscribe button and ringing the notification bell.